do you want to do well on your surgery rotation? If you said yes, then in this video, you are going to find seven resources that helped me and many of my students just crush the surgery rotation and the shelf exam, and I think it's going to help you get honors as well. What are those resources? I'm going to give you those after this intro. <laughs> All right guys, what is going on? Lex here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. If you're new to this channel and you wanna learn how to thrive on your medical rotation and your medical school experience, then go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe to the channel and help me get to my impossible goal of 25,000 subscribers. But with that being said, let's get into the resource that is just gonna help you crush the surgery rotation, which is a very unique rotation. Um, you know, it's a very obvious thing to say. As somebody that's not going into surgery or wanted to go to surgery, it's still a rotation I wanted to do well in. And so I use these resources to help me get honors. I'm sure you can too. Now, basically, I'm going to be giving each resource a grade from like an A to a C. And that way you can kind of see at what level I think a resource would be impactful for you and which resources I recommend. And then any resource I mentioned will also be linked in the description below, um, and as well as any blog posts videos that I refer to. So again, go ahead and check out the description. But let's get into the first resource. And the resource you have to start with when you talk about any rotation is UWorld. Now UWorld gets an A for me and the reason is is that the shelf exam for the surgery rotation is very medicine heavy and UWorld has you know about 150 questions the last time I checked on surgery questions that are very good for things like appendicitis and gallbladder, things that are very surgery specific. But the shelf exam goes into much broader detail about things that you tend to learn on your internal medicine rotation. So while it is very good for surgery questions, you're still gonna to have to find some time or a resource that's gonna help you kind of cover the basis for internal medicine. If you haven't done your internal medicine rotation yet, then I encourage you to also try to do, after you finish the surgery questions, of course, to do questions like the GI, the palm, in the card section because those are some of the common systems that end up also showing up um, on the surgery shelf exam. So do the surgery questions first and then add in those internal medicine questions. If you've already done your rotation, maybe you review a few of those topics because you're going to be better well suited for um, the rotation. So that is why UWorld gets an A in my book. Now resource number two is a beast but also super effective and that is De Virgilio. Um, this is a huge surgery textbook, it's like 700 pages, and so that is why it also gets an A. If it was shorter, I would easily give an A+. It is the text that I use, and the reason I love it is because, one, they have great illustrations, they focus on almost any topic you need to know for your surgery rotation, and two, and this is my favorite, it's put in like a question-answer format. And so, basically, you have a question, and then you have maybe a paragraph or two answering that question, answering that topic. So it's great for people that learn, uh, like myself that learn in that Q&A format. So if you want to basically get an all-inclusive surgery uh, experience, if you're interested in surgery, I encourage you guys to get this book. Um, and you're still going to be able to finish it on your surgery rotation as long as you're not like a Q3 every you know three-day call system. Um, if you are, then I encourage you not to use this book. But um, if you aren't, then go ahead and give this book a shot. Um, I really enjoyed it. And there's like, um, you know, a tons of practice questions at the very end as well. So D Virgilio for your surgery rotation is like the go-to text. Now the next resource, guys, I'm going to mention is probably the one that deserves the A-plus out of all of these, and that is Pastana Surgical Notes. This is like such a helpful book, and it's only, I think, 140 pages. So if you want something that's a small that basically hits on every high-yield topic in your surgical rotation and for your surgery shelf, you need to get this book. Um, so buy this book regardless of what other resources you use from this video. This is the resource you should be using. And again, it's in a very similar format than De Virgilio. It's broken down by top Topic, and then it just hits on with very brief sentences and paragraphs anything you need to know and that's basically it. it doesn't give you any extra fluff there are some practice questions at the end so you can practice how much you've gained of the high yield material so it's a great book to honestly start your surgical rotation with and just get a good exposure to everything and then read it again uh, at the end of your rotation it's easily something you can read in a day or two um, and then do it maybe two iterations during your whole rotation you're going to be solid for your high yield material again that will be linked down in the description below but Pistana surgical notes maybe a plus plus um, in my book so definitely check it out now resource number four is online med ed and this gets an a plus in my book as well and this is before i was really using it for things like step two and i made review uh videos about it again this will be linked in the description below but what made online med ed so amazing for the surgical rotations were the outlines of their notes 
Surgery is definitely a decision tree kind of field. You want to know is your patient safe enough to go in this direction? What should be the next workup be? You know, what information do you have and what more should you obtain before you make a decision? Does this patient go to surgery? Does this patient get conservatively managed? And there's a lot of criteria that go into it and there's a lot of things to memorize. But Online Meta does a great job with their notes on basically giving you these very nice decision trees where you're kind of able to walk and follow different variety of situations. And those are going to be the way the shelf exam is going to be given to. You're going to have a patient, you're going to have a situation, and there's going to be one unique feature that's going to break them off into one side of the tree, and then it's going to ask you how do you want to treat them, and Online Medit is going to basically give you that in a very simple, high yield uh, kind of way. So definitely check them out. The videos are really helpful, but because the rotation is so time intensive, I didn't really have time to use them all, so the notes are the things that I try to go through as many times as possible. And again, those links will be in the description below, uh, as well as a discount for you guys if you're interested. So Online Medit gets an A plus in my book for sure. So resource number five is definitely a book that I heard about a lot before I started my rotation and that's called Surgical Recall. Now this gets a grade of a B for me because Surgical Recall is not a book that you can use to study for your rotation. It's like this thick and it's basically done in a very Q&A format and it's perfect for when you're attending pimps you in the OR and asking questions like what structures are we looking through, what are the complications, things that are very particular to a case uh, but may not show up on a shelf exam. So it's a great book and that you can usually get them really cheap on Amazon, uh, even older editions. So if you know you have a thyroid surgery the next day, just go ahead and read the thyroid section and just be prepared because maybe one or two questions may show up uh, in the OR room and you just want to look impressive. It's a great way to get honors without like doing well on the shelf exam. So it gets a B in my book just because it doesn't help you all inclusively, but it is a great resource for you to have to look a little more prepared uh, when you're actually in the OR room doing the cases. Now, the next book is called NMS Case Books. It's a very interesting format on how they basically done it. It's like a workbook per se. So they give you a long vignette of a patient and then they ask you different questions about that patient. You may have an older patient that's about to get surgery or getting workup and then they ask you questions like, do you want to give this patient aspirin? Do you want to stop their diabetes medications? If so, how long should you do it? They're like very practical questions for what you likely will also have to ask yourself when you're about to do surgery on your patients. So it works really well for any of you that like to learn in a very interactive format uh, and may not be the biggest fan of like a Q&A unless you have something to kind of refer back to. So if you enjoy patient vignettes and over time working on them and still learning little bits of details, then I recommend NMS casebooks. I wasn't able to go through the whole thing, but I did start it. It was a very unique format. I'm sure many of you guys may enjoy that interactive but it still gives a B in my book just because it's probably not the style that majority of med students uh, use as well and you may not have time to go through all the cases but it is a little bit shorter than D Virgilio's so if you want a shorter books and you want the interactiveness then go ahead and check out NMS case books now the final resource that I have for you guys is not really a resource to study but as a resource to work on your skills and that is to get a practice suture kit I cannot tell you how important it is to learn to tie sutures and to do them well because otherwise you're just going to be the student holding the retractor for hours on your rotations. But if you can practice your suture skills and you're given the opportunity to go ahead and close an incision and you do it well, then you're going to continue to be able to get opportunities. So uh, I went ahead and grabbed a cheap uh, suture kit off of Amazon and it worked well. Um, I'll go ahead and link that in the description below too. Other things you can do is find an old towel at home that you may not be using and go ahead and just ask for some sample sutures from like the tech um, in the OR and they may still have some free ones and then you can practice tying some sutures between like the two folds of a towel. But a suture kit usually does the trick and it usually comes with some sutures as well as like the gear and um, the equipment. So um, again, that will be linked in the description. But make sure you get the suture kit because you just don't want to be that med student that's standing in the corner retracting. You want to learn those skills. It's probably one of the few times in your medical career uh, as a med student you're going to be able to kind of learn while looking silly and dumb uh, practicing. So get the suture kit and that's why I get to A plus in my book because it's going to be something that's going to pay off dividends if you learn it now. But guys, those were my top resources to get honors on your surgical rotation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed them because I used each and every one of them to some extent to help me do well on not only my shelf exam but also the rotation. So make sure you pick maybe just two or three of them, create a study schedule, and don't look back. I promise you they're going to help you get to the grade that you want. If you guys have any questions, definitely comment 
comment down below. Let me know if there's any resources that I forgot or you want me to put a review on or my thoughts. I'll be happy to answer your questions. But again, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you want more help on your clinical rotations, then check out the clinical guide, which is one of my newest projects that I'm working on. And if you want to be first in line, as well as help me in this creation, then go ahead and add your name um, to the link in the description below. But that's all I have for you guys today, so make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video with somebody you think it may help, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends.